guys, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now, I wanted to talk um, very quickly today about mineral absorption. I get a lot of comments on the videos that I make, for example, about multivitamins, um, that I, I get comments that synthetic um, vitamins and minerals are not as good as the vitamins and minerals that you get in food. Um, there are lots of videos on YouTube that um, even state that synthetic vitamins or synthetic minerals are bad for you. Um, this is a very contentious issue, but firstly, because nobody ever defines what they mean by synthetic. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a grey area. You'd have to be uh, very chemically precise in order to be able to define these terms. So, you know, I take a more generalist approach and I say that um, I don't think either of those two positions is correct. Uh, I think there is, um, you know, there is a place to take um, a multivitamin and mineral and some of the forms of the vitamins and the minerals that you get in a multivitamin and mineral tablet may not be the same as you'd find in food but that doesn't mean that they're not uh, effective there are many studies that have looked at uh, what we call synthetic vitamins or minerals in their inorganic forms um, uh, for example selenium in its inorganic form is well absorbed and it will correct a selenium deficiency so if you take a selenium tablet uh, in sel the selenite or selenate form um, you will still be able to correct the selenium deficiency. It doesn't have to be in that organic food form for, for it to be beneficial. So I, I, I don't take uh, the view that inorganic forms of, of minerals uh, or synthetic vitamins are bad. I think that's uh, you need to look at each individual case and you need to look at the uh, nutrition as a whole. Um, having said that, I have come across a very interesting paper um, and I will put the link to this paper uh, in the comments box below this video so you can have a look at it. It was published in the 1980s in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it was looking at the absorption of zinc. Uh, and what the researchers did is they, well, they wanted to investigate how iron was able to inhibit zinc absorption. Um, and what they found is that if the zinc uh, and the iron uh, was kept at a ratio of one to one, uh, and both forms were in the inorganic form, so that would be a sulfate form, it would be ferrous sulfate for the iron, and it would be zinc sulfate for the zinc. They're both inorganic forms of, uh, uh, of the minerals that you would find, for example, in ground up rock. Um, they're inorganic forms. Um, if the ratio was at one to one, there was no uh, very minimal absorption of the zinc and the zinc was well absorbed. However, as the iron uh, content uh, increased, so when you increase the amount of ferrous sulfate, there was inhibition of the zinc. So as the iron to, to zinc ratio went to two to one and three to one, there was a significant in inhibition of the absorption of the zinc. So in their inorganic forms, um, th there is inhibition of, um, you know, with there is competition between minerals for the absorption. Uh, and this is not surprising between iron and zinc. They're both divalent cations. They both use charge to get across the uh, intestinal mucosa, and therefore you would expect there to be some inhibition. This paper was particularly interesting, though, because when the iron... Um, in its ferrous sulfate form was replaced with a heme form of iron which you might find in food um, for example heme iron is found uh, in meat uh, because it's a component of blood when they replaced the inorganic form of iron with an organic form of iron this heme iron there was no inhibition of the zinc the zinc sulfate was still absorbed then they uh, reversed that so that they kept they, they had the iron in the sulfate form, but they used an organic form of zinc and they actually got the zinc from uh, from oysters. It was a food form of zinc. Uh, and what they found then was that um, if the ratio, if, the, if there was twice as much iron uh, was consumed, so uh, 100 milligrams of iron, uh, ferrous sulfate was consumed with an equivalent amount of 50 milligrams of zinc from oysters. Again, there was no inhib inhibition of the zinc. So if the iron or the zinc is in its organic form, um, that competition for transport across the intestinal mucosa doesn't appear to, to, to occur. Um, so this is actually evidence that if you eat the food forms of these uh, minerals, um, you may well actually find that um, the absorption is greater. Um, and that's perhaps no surprise. Um, many multivitamin and mineral um, uh, manufacturing uh, manufacturers uh, do attempt to try and put organic forms of these minerals in their um, in their formulas because they know they're better absorbed. So for example, amino acid chelated minerals quite often found in higher quality multivitamin and minerals because the absorption rate is much higher than the inorganic forms. Uh, and it's, it is known that the, uh, the divalent cations, uh, you know, iron, zinc, calcium, magnesium, they do compete for absorption. Um, 
and and this is this is this is actually well reported so i just found this interesting because you know it adds some actual scientific um data to the to this argument that seems to be um commonly found on on videos on youtube where people say that you know inorganic forms of iron uh, inorganic forms of minerals or synthetic vitamins uh, are actually bad for you um you know people seem to take one what a position at one extreme or the other and i think really uh, the position to take is somewhere in the middle um i would certainly and i always i've always recommended this i would always try and get as many of the minerals and vitamins as you can uh, for your requirement from your food um personally i would prefer not to take a multivitamin and mineral tablet i would i would much rather have all of my vitamins and minerals in my food but as a nutritionist and looking at the data i understand that that's not always possible um there are um certain minerals certain vitamins that are actually very difficult to get in your food in high enough amounts and that relates to the way not only that um you know uh, we treat our uh, you know our, our food produce in the environment but also how we how we how we then store it how we treat it how we manufacture the foods uh, and there is some um, spoilage of the vitamins uh, and there is some waste uh, and, and actually an absence of, of some of the minerals from the food um, and the data clearly shows that um, you know there is a need for a requirement for certain um, certain minerals particularly in certain geographical areas um, selenium for example selenium poor soils are known to exist in many parts of the world and the populations that live there have uh, selenium deficiencies uh, and therefore they do benefit from selenium supplements so taking these extreme positions yes multivitamin is you know is the best thing since sliced bread no you shouldn't take a multivitamin because they'll you know the vitamins and minerals are actually bad for you i think the real position is somewhere in the middle there is evidence that the vitamins and minerals from food uh, are better absorbed uh, particularly in this in, in this case uh, the zinc certainly seems to be uh, better absorbed if either the iron or the zinc uh, in, in case of this experiment uh, is in its organic form um, but that's not to say that inorganic forms of zinc are not beneficial because although there was less absorption when the uh, zinc was in its um, inorganic form uh, the zinc was still absorbed um, so if you had a zinc deficiency and you took the zinc sulfate you would still absorb some of the zinc we're just talking about a lesser amount of a, you know a reduction in the absorption so have a look at the paper it's very interesting it's quite easy to read um, another interesting thing it's, it's an older paper it was, it was made in the 1980s and a lot of the older papers are actually easier to read modern uh, scientific papers are getting harder and harder to read they're getting more complex some of these older papers are actually very simple uh, and this is one of one example of a very very nice um, you know uh, very nice old paper and if you have time just to read the abstract uh, to get an overview um, it, you know it is very interesting so I hope you found that uh, helpful um, as always uh, stay healthy eat well and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video take care mm -hmm.